On Tubi TV, I watch Howling 2, Your Sister is a Werewolf. Had a different name called something like Stilva the Werewolf Bitch. Which I, it kind of makes sense. Uh, but yeah, it, you, you look at this, it's like S T I R B A, name of this character is played by Sybil Danning. But they say Stilva or Stilba. Like, is this R and L? So I'm going to go with Sybil Danning. Sure. Anyway, so uh, this movie, uh, why was I watching this? Well, I'd seen The Howling, and it was probably 10 years ago, last time I saw it. And it was pretty decent. It had Robotine effects that could really go toe to toe with American Werewolf in London for a tenth of the budget. Uh, the, the heroine of this movie, kind of as I mentioned in the previous review, Dee Wallace was uh, the lead in the, the Howling, and her character becomes werewolf at the end, gets shot. And then this picks up immediately after, at her funeral, which doesn't make a lot of sense, and yeah, they recast her and all this. It's saying, okay, for Christopher Lee is a werewolf hunter, evidently, and he's like, hey, uh, the, these bullets that killed your sister are silver. That means she's a werewolf. But she can never rest because they were pulled out. I have to go grab a stake in her heart. So does the stake stay there? And then if you leave it, now now you don't give them rest anymore? How does it... And besides, why are we mixing up vampire lore here? Are we just, Do we get confused and just go, screw it, vampire shit applies here too? Because he goes to get the the body and he and he doesn't finish stabbing but they bury it and then she just turns dead again anyways but there's random werewolf attacks and whenever anything goes down with the werewolves you see a lot of like insert shots it looks like they filmed in a completely different location and they're just going oh hey yeah there's there's a werewolf being shot over there against this black wall even though the scene's going to be completely different outside in daylight but oh well let's have an extreme close-up on the werewolf face Reb Brown, guys. If there's anything more you need in a film, it's Reb Brown and Christopher Lee. So, Reb Brown gives us a look of total confusion as to what he signed up for throughout this whole movie. That's that's kind of his signature look, though, isn't it? So they they don't do anything with it with his sister, and there's no reason for him to go to Transylvania to fight the lead werewolf. I guess he wants to get revenge, but Christopher Lee was planning to do that anyways. But eventually, the the lead werewolf captures his girlfriend, who I guess is also a reporter. And Red Brown's a sheriff, and he has a gun he takes, he has guns he takes everywhere, just shoots everything with rifles. But things don't make a lot of sense because you think the driving force behind why he needs to go get the werewolf queen would be because uh, she took and is holding a hostage. But that stuff doesn't happen until they head over to Transylvania, which like I was saying, Transylvania, that's vampire lore. If anything, werewolves, I think is English. So, you know, why couldn't this have been a, maybe taking place on the moors? Uh, that, were they going too far? Didn't want to sound like they were stepping on the toes of American Werewolf in London too much? Uh, I mean, did they not want to make a good movie either? Because that could be the case too, because this is shit. Like, nothing makes any sense when you think about it at all. There, there's all this lore mythology they're trying to build up and they just borrow it from vampires. There's a band that plays some rock song in the pale, pale night. Let's just call them not Oingo Boingo, okay? Because that's really what they are. And they have like a little concert and people are, are raving. And they leave the concert, and this is near the beginning of the film. And they go out and they try to hook up only to get attacked by a werewolf. Only you keep seeing these shots of her standing still and you're like, how many werewolves are there attacking th these punks? Oh, but the band makes another appearance because Sybil Danning was an old bitch, sacrificed some gal, becomes young, and it's like, well, what, what was she waiting for? Like, this doesn't even make any sense. This wasn't somebody important that had to be sacrificed. It, what were you? How long does it take? Do you need to do this like once a week? Like what the hell? Totally not explained. She wears a bunch of leather with what looks like razor blades on it, or 
or leather fashioned in the style of the Daytona seats and the Ferraris. So she does this. At one point, she whips out her massive rack, and they'll play this during the end credits, just whoosh, 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 like 20 times. Like, okay, we had one decent shot in the film, let's keep reusing it. But I like how this band seemingly plays with the same footage repeated again in the castle, and they're making it seem like they're at the, they're attending the orgy that we're watching. But we never have any shots showing them and Sybil Danning or any of these other people in the same building. It's just lazy shit. Oh, it's bad. Yeah, Red Brown goes by, shotguns enough people, enough werewolves that look like they're in monkey suits out in the woods. There's some terrible effects as they try to rotoscope a bunch of shit around Sybil Danning. Werewolf orgies all over the place. Bondage gear. You hear the same song from Not Oingo Boingo. Eventually, Christopher Lee corners Sybil Danning after she killed his midget friend and there was nothing really came of that. And all of the guys that come to help them on their quest, all these men of the cloth who are quickly killed one at a time. Like, oh hey, I'm not Red Brown or Christopher Lee. Well, I guess I don't get to talk and I just get to be a victim out here because we gotta see, see somebody get torn up by a werewolf, right? Christopher Lee finally corners uh, Sybil Danning gives her like a hug it turns out that he's her brother and there you have the title your sister is a werewolf you, if anything clever came of this movie it's that because you're thinking the title alludes to red brown situation your sister is a werewolf well hey mine too so says christopher lee count dooku stabs her and then there's a bunch of fire and shit it looks like that it looks so bad it looks bad by any standards but it looks older, it looks almost 10 years older. It looks like that Kiss uh, straight to video movie. It looks like that. I guess they catch fire and they're dead, but there might be some more werewolves around because they didn't finish killing everything. Oh, but Red Brown and his reporter chick who has no personality head back to home. It's Halloween, some kid knocks on the door with what I guess we would call for this movie good werewolf effects. And you're like, hey, where's that kid live? Oh, across the hall. What happened? Did, was the kid trick-or-treating and went to one house and then went back home? How else would they know? So they, they ring on the doorbell. The guy's like, hey, I'm dressed up like a priest. I don't have a kid. Well, is that your costume or what? And it's like, oh, no. There's more werewolves. Oh, my God. Sybil Danning whips a boob out. And this is so bad. Uh... You know what, the schlock value of a, of a bad 80s horror has some value to it that you can't get today. You don't get the charm of having bad makeup or poor non-CGI, non-digital effects. This song that the, not Oingo Boingo plays is not that bad. It could have been worse. I'll give them that. But uh, overall, guys, this is not a movie you need to be checking out. I'm not going to review any more of the howling films because I, I know I marathoned them on USA Network way back in the day and they only get worse. Well, yeah, maybe. There was one that took place in like Australia had to deal with some church that I think might have been more coherent than this and th this works as kind of a weird werewolf anthology series. But yeah, Howling 2, Your Sister's a Werewolf, one and a half out of four stars.